I've come to my last location of the day. This is the third film of the day as well. So it's been a long day, I must admit. Now you might be wondering, why did I decide to make three films? Why didn't I just edit them together into one long film about the whole day, about going to different spots? Now there was actually a reason. So, film number one, Bow Fiddle Rock at Sunrise. The whole point of that film was to show you that you can get several different compositions from the same subject if you just think a bit inventively and you move around the scene. If you change your position, if you go to a different viewpoint, you might get a different composition with the same subject. Film number two, the middle of the day sequence. That was about exploring new locations and trying to find different composition subjects and styles of photography throughout a difficult period of the day when the light isn't the best, there's no colours in the sky, it's all very flat and, and a bit grey and, and so the conditions weren't brilliant but I did try to find new compositions, I explored new beaches and I filed away locations into my mental library of places that I would like to revisit at some point. And now we're at the third film. Again, this is a new location to me. I'm in Fraserborough. I've never been here before. I've come to the beach and I'm staying in one location here. But I'm going to explore different styles, different subjects, and hopefully, if we get some sunset colours, I'll I'll try and figure out a composition with those. It depends where they are as well. I must admit, I do not feel confident about sunset colours. There is a hell of a lot of clouds. Who knows what's going to happen? I've got an hour and a half, roughly, until sunset. I've already had a little scout around just to see what's here. There is a lot of people here. A lot. There's a surf school going on on the beach. So it's going to be a case of voiceover again. I'll be interested to know, have you preferred this this style with the voiceover? Or do you prefer when I'm talking in the moment? Because I sometimes feel that in the moment I ramble, I'm not sure where I'm going with it until I get it on the computer. And I think that the benefit of the voiceover is I can process what I'm thinking. I can tell you exactly what's happening because it's already happened rather than in the moment when I might change my mind at the last minute. I'd be interested to hear what you think. And again, I'm rambling, so I'm gonna wrap this part up and get out there and go find some photos to take. When I arrived at Fraserborough and I went out to explore the beach, one of the main features that captivated me was the sand dunes and marram grass. Where I grew up, I hadn't encountered a habitat like this. The majority of beaches are shingle or pebbles and they are flanked by cliffs and towns, so there are no sand dunes. My first encounter with sand dunes was in Scotland and I am still experimenting with how to photograph them and how to capture their magical nature. The first composition that came to mind was an attempt to photograph the colours and textures of the marram grass, a unique feature of the sand dunes. I wanted to impart the magical sense I feel when exploring these places, so I used a slow shutter speed for the grass's movement in the wind to be captured and there was a soft glow from the diffuse light that looks brilliant and really emphasises that magical quality.
I continued my journey through the dunes until I was confronted with a wall of golden sand. The combination of sand and grass was excellent and really exemplified the landscape and habitat. I switched to my 17 to 40 mm lens so I could include the grass as a foreground anchor. I photographed this sand wall in landscape orientation before switching to a portrait orientation. And let me know which way round you think works best for this subject. I continued on and I could see a lighthouse, so I tried to frame it with the sand dunes, but it looked too small in the frame, so I got a bit closer by moving on to the beach. On the beach, however, the lighthouse still looked very small. So I changed my lens to my 70 to 200 mm and zoomed in, isolating the lighthouse with the sea and the sky. I put on my 6 stop ND filter to slow the shutter speed and smooth the waves. It was a nice, minimal composition, but it left a little something to be desired. The lighthouse was still small, and I couldn't frame it in a way that I liked.
So I decided to change subjects. As in my last video, I was inspired to try and capture the sea and the waves due to all of the surfers enjoying the beach. At first, a simple image of the waves breaking using a continuous shutter to capture the waves as they came. But again, like in the last video, I wasn't sure if it worked. So I decided to try my other technique, ICM photography. I set up the camera with a slower shutter speed and I moved the camera horizontally on the tripod as it was exposing to capture the colours and tones of the sea and the waves. I was now beginning to feel the exhaustion of the day. The lighthouse was annoying me with how difficult it was to frame, and I was convinced that there would be no sunset colours, so I made my way back to the car, but it would prove to be a mistake. Sunset is sort of happening now and I'm sitting in the car, I'm looking south where the city is and there is this amazing colours. If I flip you around, I don't know if this camera will pick it up, just, just pick it up, which is absolutely beautiful. Problem was, I was looking north and west, where now there's a sort of pinky glow appearing behind the lighthouse, but I don't think it would have helped to the composition at all, to be honest. Mm. Yeah. No, nah, it's no good, no good. Hardly anything back there, so it, it really wouldn't have shown up in the picture either. The problem with the composition was it was just, I was struggling to find a way of composing it. The lighthouse looks a lot bigger with your eye than it does with the camera. And even at 200 millimeters, which is what that shot was, it still looks tiny. It still looks tiny in the frame. And the only thing I could frame it with was the sea and the sky and just make a very minimal shot. But there was that white boat on the pier and it was just annoying me and and so I just I threw in the towel this was not what how I intended to end <laughs> this video but you know I was a bit disappointed with what I could get at this location and so I'm gonna do a bit more research about Fraserburgh see what I can find about some pictures 
I'm going to check out Kim Grant, who I'll link to in the end screen as well, because she does a lot of stuff up here in the Moray Coast. And uh, I'll be checking out some of her videos for Fraserburgh, because I'm sure there are better locations than this beach. And I hope you can see what I was trying to explain about the first video being for one subject in different compositions, a second video about exploring different locations, finding different styles and, and subjects, and then this the third video was about finding different subjects and compositions and styles but in the same place. So it's sort of like a trifecta about composition, exploring and trying to find photographic subjects. That was the sort of thesis for this day, so I hope you've enjoyed this three-part little series. Wow, the colours have really gotten good to the south. And a bit better behind me. After I finished filming this piece, I stepped out of my car and just did an ICM image to capture the colours that had appeared. There was no subject to frame, so the subject was the colour, and an ICM captured that best. I didn't film myself taking this photo, so I've just used some B-roll from earlier for me to talk over, but I hope you like the image that I managed to capture. had fun with these with with today so don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with what's happening you could also follow me on instagram as well i'm trying to po be post more on there and uh thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one